Lou Gehrig doesn't want to make his friend run, so he bangs it into the bleachers. That's Larrup and Lou rounding third with Babe waiting at the plate. The Yanks won the pennant, and Ruth and company faced the cards in the World Series. Here was a pitch to the Babe. Ruth swung. That's all, ball. The Babe hit three homers in that series and had 47 home runs during the regular season. However, the Cards won the series and Babe Ruth eyed the 1927 season. Opening day, Yanks versus Philadelphia A. Ruth greeted Ty Cobb, Eddie Collins looking on. Ty wished the Babe luck and the fans are ready for the start of the 1927 pennant race. A bouquet from the Babe to his sister the watch for her wrist. You can see the family resemblance here. And the babe kept this one in the family. This was 1927, and this was Babe Ruth then, and this was the most unusual of the 60 home runs he hit that year, a record that every big league batter shoots at. This one was inside the park. Babe Ruth at home in any ballpark is really at home here with Mrs. Ruth. When Babe wasn't banging out baseballs, he was banging out tunes. And here was the sweetest music to the fans. The long poke out to Ruthville, right field if you're scoring, and the smiling salt in the swat completing the circuit. After the season, and here was the Babe's personal army. How the kids loved him, and how he loved to autograph baseballs for them, and chat with them, and shake their hands. of American youth, Babe Ruth. This is Bill Slater with new shots from our sports album showing historic innings in World Series games. First, Dizzy Dean at bat in the 1934 series against Detroit. Diz does it. Third inning of the seventh game and Dean delivers a double to start a memorable inning for the St. Louis Cardinals. Pepper Martin hits one down the line and beats the throw to first. Dean moving to third. There's a show going on, folks. Pitcher Alden Alker blazes a pitch out with Roth Rocket bat, but Martin makes it to second. Roth Rock walked and freshes up. Fordham Frankie grabs one he likes, and the big parade is on as the ball is rifled into right field. And Dean and Martin and Roth Rock spin around the paths to score. Fresh holes at second. With Fresh moved to third, schoolboy Rowe is now on the mound. Rip Collins lines a pitch into left, and Fresh trots home with the fourth run of the inning. Collins later gets to second. Up comes Lippy Leo DeRocher, whose perfect poke moves Collins over to third base. are loaded again with hogs at hurling as Dean comes up for the second time in the inning. Dizzy beats out a Baltimore chop, another run in, and the sacks are still loaded. Pepper Martin's up again. Hogs' pitch is too close. Martin walks, forcing in Orsati with the seventh run in the third inning of the seventh game. The Cards win 11 to nothing. Classic beginning, Yankee Stadium, first game, 1933, Yanks versus Giants. Sixth inning, Hubble on the hill. Lefty Gomez is on first as Crossetti singles, and Gomez goes to second. Red Rolf up. Rolf bunts, Mancuso whips the ball to Dick Bartell at third, but all hands are safe. Hubble still in there. Joe DiMaggio's the batter. DeMarge and real damage, a double to left. Gomez comes in to score. Crossetti follows him, and two runs are in. Gary gets on, and Hubble faces Yankee catcher Bill Dickey. Bill blasts the grass cutter that goes through Burgess Whitehead at second. Rolf scores, and the bases are still loaded. Up now is outfielder George Selkirk. Twinkle toes, single. Gary and Dickey cross the plate. Seven runs are in. see King Carl Hubble leave the mound, which means it's time for us to leave you.
here at Pelham, New York in 1943, Gene Saracen defends his PGA title against co-finalist Hagen. On the 37th green, Saracen putts, misses, and is plenty puzzled by it all. Hagen can tie it by sinking his, and he does. So the crowd follows Hagen and Saracen to the 38th, where Saracen lofts a chip shot to the green, then sinks his putt to win the match and to become PGA champion two times running, Gene Sarazen. In 1929, in sunny Agua Caliente, it's Sarazen again. Keenest among his flock of smooth swinging competitors is Al Espinoza. Horton Smith wants his share of that big $25,000 purse. And to the crowd, it looks as if Smith is going to make that 19th hole a profitable one. Out of a trap, he has to sink this to beat Sarazen. And it's Smith who sunk. But a good loser offers congratulations to a great winner, Sarazen. Off of 1930 is Georgia's Bobby Jones. In May, he wins the British Amateur at St. Andrews, Scotland. The following month, he takes the British Open title, and here at Interlochen in Minneapolis, it's July, and Jones again goes after one of golfing's most glittering crowns. He doesn't sink them all, but he drops enough of them to match the best efforts of the world's most expert linksmen. Bobby conquers the fairways and greens of Interlochen to win the U.S. Open. Jones has three of golf's four most precious wins. At Marion, Pennsylvania, he enters competition for the fourth and final top flight title of the year. It's September, and Bobby qualifies for the U.S. Amateur with a sizzling 69, then proceeds to crack out a medal-winning two-round total of 142. Then he breezes to swift victory. And Atlanta's mayor welcomes home the wonder man of golf, links that miracle, the Grand Slam of 1930, Bobby Jones.